Well, no one told me about her, the way she lied. But it's too late to say you're sorry. How would I know? Why should I care? Well, let me tell you about the way she looked, the way she acted, the color of her hair. Her voice was soft and cool, her eyes were clear and bright, but she's not there. I always say that. I consider my film themselves to be skins that I shed in order to uh, get to the next one, to keep like the same obsessions and desires and fears also, but to get deeper into that, you know? So yeah, I do think that I've, I've um, morphed a lot since Raw. I think that uh, in many ways, because Titan was so hard to write, especially because of Raw, to be honest. It was very hard to fight the awareness of the outside expectations for my second film. And more than anything, it was very hard to fight my own expectations for the second film. Est-ce que tu peux bouger légèrement tes mains pour moi, s'il te plaît? Il n'y a, a pas de risque que la plaque bouge dans sa tête, hein? Non. C'est très solide. C'est en titane. I actually spent a full year being completely frozen in front of my computer every day and not being able to shed one word on the page. Uh, but I don't think that anything related to creation just falls on you like a mystical illumination. I don't believe in that. It's just like being very stubborn, I think. <laughs> but um, I think this is why um, there is a very... Um, um, important radicality in Titan. And I think that if I had not been through that, uh, Titan would be very different, probably, because that radicality is something that comes from realizing I had to do whatever I wanted, whether people would like it or not. When I knew about the movie, I knew it was going to be physically very demanding, that, that I was going to have to train, that I was going to have to, like, make people think I could also be a guy. Those three things made me want to do it like 100% because that's like being an actress was like my dream job. But I wanted to do it exactly that way. You know, like I've always been fascinated with like watching interviews of actors talking about how they changed their bodies for a movie, how they prepared like for like a year sometimes. And that's exactly how I wanted to work and how I wanted to do this job. It's the first time I'm doing a character with the same name as mine, and it's, it's not free, it's, it's, she wanted that. So uh, I think that I have the same uh, fear as the character. It's normal, I'm not 25. I'm afraid about uh, death, about dying, about um, try not to get old too fast. And the only way you have to do that for men and women, it's to try to work on your appearance. When I read the script, between the lines, I thought she's gonna ask me to make something with my body, and it's a good idea because it's good for Vincent Legrand, but it's good for me, Vincent. I'm gonna change something. So I, I worked hard um, running and, and doing like that, and it's through the body that I start to understand things about the character. One way or another, and the one way or another is very important in the case of Titan, but I need to relate to characters, to feel things. You know, I need my characters. I need their transformative arc. Um, I need their journey. And uh, I say it's all the more important when you think about Titan, because I, I, I came into a very big issue while writing it, that I understood very fast that my main character was absolutely unrelatable and unlikable and that I'm going to start my film only with her for the first 30 minutes. So how do I keep the audience in the room? You know, at the beginning of the movie, she's very self-sufficient. She's extremely well-functioning. She's, uh, she doesn't need anyone else. And if people, you know, get too close, she will just kill them. So it's like, she doesn't need anyone else and she doesn't want anyone else around, like, also because she's been used to it with a dad who obviously didn't love her. Um, but the loneliness ends when she needs, 
you know, protection. At this level, I think the first thing that I started understanding in, in her is her anger, her rage, and hence her violence. Because Alexia is a very, like, direct response to the idea that a woman is a designated victim. And I thought it's, it's funny because a guy who is going to assault someone or, or even heckle or whatever, uh, is never, it's never going to occur to that person that that woman could retaliate in a way that could hurt him, actually. And this infuriates me to a point that I actually wanted to bring all that anger in someone who would be, like, able to retaliate just a moment because she is a psychopath. And it means that she doesn't feel fear. I got closer to her and learned to love her just by, like, researching a lot about what being a psychopath meant. And also, yeah, the physical aspect of it made me, made her more relatable to me in a way, because I'm also a very physical person, so it's kind of, this is the one thing where I can relate to her. For me, the entry point was her body. And obviously, I like to, um, uh, to work around bodies a lot, but it's the first time that I really use my character's body as a way to feel a form of empathy for her. So that's really crucial, the way I'm gonna portray that. Hence the violence. The violence became, all of a sudden, something that was necessary in order for us to feel for the person that we were following. I have to say that the, you know, the physical transformation made me, as, as a person, very vulnerable as well. Because I, I never saw myself like this, and I honestly thought it was going to be way easier because I've shaved my head like a hundred times before, bleached my eyebrows, I had like pink, blue, green hair. Like I, I kind of like tried pretty much everything I could do in terms of like, transforming my, my face, but I couldn't see myself at all because I was doing like six hours of makeup in the morning, shooting all day, and then taking it off and then back to the hotel, and I had no time to see my actual face and reconnect with my actual body. So I, I, there was like this kind of like 10 days where I was just, I was kind of dissociating, and it took Vincent to come to me and say, you know, don't worry, it's just like prosthetics, and it's gonna be fine. What was really nice with Agathe, it's the fact that it was her first movie, so she was not professional at all. And that's very nice because we, we help each other a lot. It's, it's a kind of protection, a kind of a, a relationship between a father and a daughter. But in another way, she learns me a lot of things too. Because when you work with somebody who doesn't know nothing about the job, he's sometimes unconscious. Sometimes he's taking risk that you couldn't imagine. And it's great because it makes you feel younger, innocent, naive, new. And that's what I like, the mix of the two persons give something um, I don't know what's the name in, in English, inattendu, unexpected, unexpected, yeah. I feel like it speaks to everyone because, just because it talks about, you know, love, and most art is about love anyways, um, or death. In that case, it speaks about both. So, you know, I feel like it's giving strength to people as well. It, because it's a movie that says, like, even though you think You've never been loved, even though you think you can't love anymore, even though you think you're just, you're so, you're alone. In fact, even a psychopath can learn how to love. So <laughs> here's to you, <laughs> you, can, you can try and do that. So I feel like, because it's, it's very hopeful, despite of everything. Someone told me that they cried so much at the end of the film, but they were not sure why. And for me, I think that up to now, it's been the best compliment I ever gotten on my film. I love this idea. I love the fact that you, you don't cry for the characters. What I wanted to convey with my film is the regrets that we can have about our humanity and also the, the belief that we can make it whatever we want to. And I think that it, it's something that just talks a bit deeper than um, just the, the, the story itself, you know. That's what I try to do. <laughs>